So uh, we are starting to get some results in from uh, a bit of the black sheep of this election, it has to be said, the late entrant, the UK, that didn't even know it was going to be taking part until just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and the, the situation in the United Kingdom uh, is very much uh, along the lines of what we were expecting uh, from the opinion polls uh, in the run-up to uh, the vote itself, uh, the Brexit party dominating massively. Uh, we're seeing scores in some uh, areas, not in the, the, the regions, but in some uh, areas of uh, over 50% in favour of the Brexit party. That is likely to translate across the country into extremely big wins. Uh, we're seeing the uh, Conservative Party falling to uh, an all-time low of 10% in these elections, it would, it would seem, according to some early uh, polls. Uh, and that's the party of government, of course, uh, well, uh, the Conservative Party falling mm -hmm. to 10%. What we're seeing in the northeast of the country, uh, uh, Labour heartland, uh, Labour is shedding votes too in favour of the Brexit Party. The northeast uh, seeing two of its MEPs uh, being mm -hmm. from the Brexit Party. One from Labour, uh, that's a reverse from the situation of 2014. Uh, the east of the country, Brexit again, uh, the Brexit Party again um, uh, consolidating its uh, victories there. Uh, three uh, MEPs from uh, the east of the country, two for the Lib Dems, one for the Greens and one for the Conservative Party. What's interesting there is uh, that... Uh, the Brexit Party is consolidating its uh, uh, its popularity, but it's the anti-Brexit parties in the east of the country that are also scoring a total of three uh, MEPs there. So there is a degree of, if you will, a fight back from the anti-Brexit uh, uh, movements, and questions were likely to have to be asked about why th th those anti-Brexit movements couldn't uh, unify if they're going to have the same voter share uh, as the Brexit Party. I see.